ಕತ್ತು ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಇದೆ ಸರ್ ಹಲೋ ವಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಪ್ಲೊಮಾ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಮುರಳಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅನಾಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಜಾಮಿಟ್ರಿ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಂಗಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಈಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಎ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಬಿ ವೈ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಸಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಝೀರೋ ಯು ಅರೇಂಜ್ ಎ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಅರೇಂಜ್ ಎ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ತ್ರೀ ಡಿ ಶೇಪ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ದಟ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಎನಿ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದೆಮ್ ಲೈಸ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ದ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದಿ ಡಯಾಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಬೌ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಟೇಕ್ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬಿ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ದ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಲೈ ಎಂಟೈರ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಎ ಕಾಂಬಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಲೈನ್ಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದ ಈಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಎ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಬಿ ವೈ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಸಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಡಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಝೀರೋ ವೇರ್ ಎ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿ ಆರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಮೂವ್ ದಿ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಸಿ ಝೆಡ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ದಿ ಈಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ನಾವು ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ the first one is known as the normal form in the initial part of solid geometry my friends i think you know the uh, concepts of direction cosines and direction ratios so to derive the normal form of the plane we, we these are the prerequisites so let lmn be the direction cosines of the normal or the perpendicular on drawn to the plane so you have a plane surface from the origin o drop a perpendicular on on the plane and let small p be the length of the perpendicular then since the direction cosines of on are assumed as lmn it clearly follows that the <coughs> coordinates of n are lp mp and np <coughs> l p m p and n p now once you have fixed the coordinates of n you now take a point p any general point p x y z on the plane then the <coughs> direction ratios of n p as you know friends if i give you two points x1 y1 z1 and x2 y2 z2 the direction ratios of the line joining the two points will be the difference of the individual coordinates so obviously the, the direction uh, ratios of the uh, the line np will be the difference of the coordinates of p and n which is x minus lp y minus mp and z minus np respectively but also from this diagram you can observe that pn is perpendicular to on so since on and np are perpendicular using the condition of perpendicularity we have that the sum of the product of the individual direction ratios is equal to 0 so you get x minus lp into l plus y minus mp into m plus z minus np into n equal to 0 on simplification and using this basic result l square plus m square plus n square equal to 1 we immediately obtain the equation lx plus my plus nz equal to p this expression is called the normal form of the plane uh, let me assert again that the normal to a plane is nothing but a perpendicular drawn to the plane we now go to the 
next form called the one point form of plane. For the one point form, you require only one point, namely x1, y1, and z1. So, for this, the equation of the any plane passing through the point x1, y1, z1 is a into x minus x1 plus b into y minus y1 plus c into z minus z1 equal to 0. The next form of the plane is called the intercept form, the intercept form of the plane. So, assume that a, b, c are the intercepts made by the plane with the x, y and z axis respectively. Uh, my friends, I think you are aware of what an intercept is. Uh, assume that the equation of the plane is a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0. An intercept is a point on any particular axis. That is to say, the plane has x intercept a in the sense the plane touches the x axis at the point a 0 0. It has y intercept b, so it touches the y axis at 0 b 0. It has z intercept c, meaning it touches the z axis at 0 0 c. Now, why we have taken all capital letters in equation 1 is because there should be no confusion between this and the general equation of the plane. If I take the same value small a small b, it should obviously clash with the earlier equation. So, we assume initially that all these are with capital letters. Now, we substitute all the three points one by one in this plane. So, since A 0 0 lies on the plane, it should satisfy the equation in one. So, you replace x by a, y by 0 and z by 0, you get a a plus 0 plus 0 plus capital D equal to 0 or that gives capital A equal to minus D by a. Similarly, 0 b 0 and 0 0 c also lie on the plane. So, we substitute these points. The first word, the first point 0 comma b comma 0 gives you capital B equal to minus d by b and this third point 0 comma 0 comma c gives you capital C equal to minus d by c. All these now are substituted back in equation 1, where this equation of the plane is assumed, which gives me minus d by a x minus d by b y minus d by c z plus capital D equal to 0. Now, divide each term by capital D and change sign to finally get x by a plus y by b plus z by c equal to 1. This equation is called the intercept form of the plane. In this equation, Remember that small a, small b, small c are the x, y and z intercepts in the sense that the length from the origin up to the x axis is a for the plane, on the y axis it is b and on the z axis it is equal to c. We now move on to the next form which is called the three point form of plane. Now, this, this uh, form gives you the equation of a plane which passes through three given points. So, if I have a plane surface like this, I have three points on the plane. What should be the equation of such a plane? Now, you can call the points as x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 and x3, y3, z3. Immediately, the equation is obtained as determinant of x minus x1, y minus y1 z minus z 1, x 1 minus x 2, y 1 minus y 2, z 1 minus z 2, x 2 minus x 3, y 2 minus y 3, z 2 minus z 3 equal to 0. On simplification, this equation reduces to the general form of the plane. The usual determinant expansion will give you the general equation of the plane. The next thing that comes is this, given a plane, what is the condition that four points will lie on this plane and this is called the condition of condition for coplanarity. So, four points x 1 y 1 z 1, x 2 y 2 z 2, x 3 y 3 z 3 and x 4 y 4 z 4 are coplanar or they are said to lie in the same plane if determinant of x 1 minus x 2, y 1 minus y 2, z 1 minus z 2, x 2 minus x 3, y 2 minus y 3, z 2 minus z 3 x 3 minus x 4, y 3 minus y 4 
z3 minus z4 equal to 0. This is the condition for 4 points to lie in a plane. Now, there are two different cases possible. First, given 4 points, you, you can be you, you can show that these points are coplanar. Second, given 4 points, can you find the equation of the plane that contains these points? So, for this what you do? Choose any 3 points from these 4 and substitute in the 3 point form. So, these are some basic forms in the plane. Now, we will now go to some examples which will illustrate the substitution of these points. The first example is this. Find the equation of the plane passing through the points 1 to 1 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3 and 3, 4, comma 2. As you see friends, the you, you now require the equation of a plane passing through 3 points. So, what we do? We label the points. So, take the we take x 1, y 1, z 1 as the first, first point. So, let x 1, y 1, z 1 be 1, 2, 1. Take x 2, y 2, z 2 as the second point 2, 1, 3 and take x 3, y 3, z 3 as the third point 3, 4, 2. And since there are 3 points given, immediately you go to the 3 point form. So, we consider the 3 point form of the plane which is given by the determinant that you see. Substitute these points for x 1, y 1, z 1, x 2, y 2, z 2 and x 3, y 3, z 3. Immediately you get this determinant x minus 1 into sorry x minus 1, y minus 2, z minus 1 for x 1, y 1, z 1. Then x 1 minus x 2, y 1 minus y 2, z 1 minus z 2 respectively give 1 minus 2, 2 minus 3. Then y 1 minus y 2, y 2 minus y 3 will give 2 minus 1 and 1 minus 4. And finally, z 1 minus z 2, z 2 minus z 3 give 1 minus 3 and 3 minus 2. The usual determinant expansion should give you the required equation of the plane, which is x minus 1 into uh, <coughs> this is 1, 1 into 1, 1 minus this is minus 3 into minus 2, 1 minus 6 minus y minus 2 into minus 1 into 1 is minus 1 minus minus 1 into minus 2 is plus 2 plus z minus 1 into uh, 1 minus 2 minus 1 into minus 3 is plus 3 minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 into 1 is minus 1 equal to 0. The expansion gives you uh, 5x minus 3y plus 4z minus 4z plus 5 equal to 0 which is the required equation of the plane. Now, you can easily verify this answer by substituting any of the 3 points in the final result. Immediately, you can see whether these points satisfy the given equation. We will now move on to the next example. Show that the points 3, 4, 1, minus 1, minus 2, 5, 1, 7, 1 and 1, 1, 3 are coplanar. Find the equation of the plane containing them. So, we have already uh, seen the condition for coplanarity. You can see that again displayed here. So, you just uh, label the 4 points. The first point is labeled x 1, y 1, z 1. The second point is labeled x 2, y 2, z 2. The third is labeled x 3, y 3, z 3 and the fourth is labeled x 4, y 4 and z 4. Use these points and substitute in the LHS of the determinant above. So, you can see that x 1, y 1, z 1 uh, is 3, 4. So, x, x 1 minus x 2, uh, y 1 minus y 2 and uh, z 1 minus z 2 can be obtained by these values. Likewise, x 2 minus x 3, y 2 minus y 3, z 2 minus z 3 can be obtained by uh, x 3 minus x 4, y 3 minus y 4 and z 3 minus z 4 can be obtained from the given 4 points. So, the, the usual differences will give you the following determinant 3 plus 1, 4 plus 2, 1 minus 5, minus 1 minus 1, minus 2 minus 7, 5 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 7 minus 1 and 1 minus 3. On expansion, immediately you get 0. So, this means that the 
condition for coplanarity is satisfied by the given four points. Therefore, you conclude that the four point four given points are coplanar. Now, to find the equation of the plane, you, you can choose in fact, you can take any of the three points, but preferably the first three because you just have to modify the, this determinant slightly. How to modify that? Remove the last row and replace the first one, first row by the three point form x minus x 1, y minus y 1 and z minus z 1. The other two rows will be the same x 1 minus x 2, x 2 minus uh, y 1 minus y 2, z 1 minus z 2, x 2 minus x 3, y 2 minus y 3 and z 2 minus z 3. Uh, similar to example 1, you can see that finally, the equation of the plane is given by 3 x plus 2 y plus 6 z minus 23 equal to 0. My friends in this example observe that you have shown that four given points are lying in one plane and hence you are finding the equation of the plane containing them. Now, can you slightly vary this example or in the sense can you make it slightly different that can be done with the following example. Example 3, find the constant k such that the points 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, then 1, 2, 1, then point number 3, 4, 5, 6 and 3, 0, k lie in one plane. So, what is the condition or what is the value of k that will make it that all the four points lie in one plane. Hence, find the equation of the plane. So, as usual, we label the points as x1, y1, z1 equal to 1, 1, 0, x2, y2, z2 equal to 1, 2, 1, x3, y3, z3 equal to 4, 5, 6 and x4, y4, z4 equal to 3, 0 and k. Since the points are already coplanar, we substitute these points in the condition for coplanarity. So, substituting these points in the condition for coplanarity, we have the usual determinant. Substitute all the points and expand. Right? Immediately on expansion, we get k equal to 1 by 3. Now, how do you find the equation of the plane? There are two things. First, you can substitute this k in the fourth point and take any of the three points or best, the equation of the plane is obtained by considering the three points not having k and applying these three point form as illustrated in example 2. The answer is given, the answer is 2x plus 3y minus 3z minus 5 equal to 0. The next question is this, I have the general equation of the uh, normal form of plane Lx plus my plus nz equal to p. In this form, it is known that given a plane surface, if I have the normal or the perpendicular drawn to this plane surface, then the direction cosines of this normal are L m n. Now, can you relate this to the general equation of the plane? That is possible with the following. The general equation of the plane is A x plus B y plus C z plus D equal to 0. Now, we slightly rearrange this. We write it as A x plus B y plus C z equal to minus D. Now, you just divide each term by the square root of A square plus B square plus C square. So, what do you get then? You get A by root A square plus B square plus C square into x plus B by root A square plus B square plus C square into y plus C by root a square plus b square plus c square into z equal to minus d by root a square plus b square plus c square. The question is are these two the, can you relate these two? I think you know that if a, b, c are the direction ratios of a line, of course, observe that a normal is nothing but a line. So, if a, b, c are the ratios, direction ratios of a line, then the corresponding direction cosines of the same line are obtained by these expressions, correct. So, for given a, b, c, l, m, n are these three. That means to say that 
if L m n here represent the direction cosines of the normal, these values a, b, c in the general equation of the plane should represent the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. In fact, any problem that you do apart from uh, coplanarity or finding the equation of the plane with three points, right? the best thing would be to always use the normal. No problem in plane can be solved without the normal. Right? Anything that is geometrical, it is always better that you use the normal uh, drawn to the plane. So, that is what you see mentioned in the note here. In the general equation of the plane, the coefficients of x, y, z which are a, b, c represent the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. This is a very important concept because using this normal, you can almost solve uh, almost uh, all the problems in plane where some geometrical aspect is involved. Now, with this in mind, we will go to the next example. Find the equation of the plane passing through the point 3 minus 3, 1 and perpendicular to the planes 7x plus y plus 2z equal to 6 and 3x plus 5y minus 6z equal to 3. So, what you see in this example is the following. You require the equation of a plane, say suppose this is the plane. This plane is passing through the point 3 minus 3, 1, but at the same time it is perpendicular to two other planes. So, this plane there is one plane here and another plane here. So, the normal down to this plane and the normals of the two perpendicular planes will be obviously perpendicular to this normal. So, if this plane and this plane are perpendicular, it means that the normal to this plane is perpendicular to this and again the normal to this plane is perpendicular to this and the condition of perpendicularity is known to you. If two lines have ratios a, b, c and a dash, b dash, c dash, the two lines are perpendicular if a, a dash plus b, b dash plus c, c dash equal to 0. This is known as the condition for perpendicularity or the condition for two lines to be perpendicular and I should remind you that these normals are only straight lines and one more given a plane the coefficients of x, y, z in the equation given represent the direction ratios of the normal to that plane. So, we will now try to solve this example. Uh, you require the equation of the plane 3 minus 3, 1. So, because one point is given, we initially use the one point form. That is what is written in this note. If a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 and a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash z plus d dash equal to 0 represent two planes direction ratios of the normal to the first plane are the coefficients of x, y, z in the equation which are a, b, c. The direction ratios of the normal to the second plane are again the coefficients of x, y, z which are a dash, b dash, c dash. So, if the planes are perpendicular, their normals are also perpendicular. Hence, the direction ratios should satisfy the perpendicularity condition as illustrated here a, a dash plus b, b dash plus c, c dash equal to 0. Now, let us solve this example. Now, you require the plane passing through 3 minus 3, 1. So, first apply the one point form. From one point form taking x 1, y 1, z 1 equal to 3 minus 3, 1, we obtain the equation of the plane as a into x minus 3 plus b into y plus 3 plus c into z minus 1 equal to 0. On simplification, we get a x plus b y plus c z minus 3 a plus 3 b minus 3 c equal to 0. Let us call that equation 1. Observe the coefficients of x, y, z. They are a, b and c. So, these are the direction ratios of the normal of the required plane. Now, this plane is perpendicular to 7 x plus y plus 2 z minus 6 equal to 0, whose direction ratios of normal are the coefficients of x, y, z in it, which are 7, 1 and so, what should happen? From the condition for perpendicularity, you should have 7 a plus 1 b plus 2 c equal to 0. We will call that equation 2. Again, the second plane is also perpendicular to this 
and that plane equation is given by 3x plus 5y minus 6z minus 3 equal to 0 whose direction ratios of normal are the coefficients of x, y, z which are 3, 5 and minus 6. So again the condition for perpendicularity can be applied to get 3a plus 5b minus 6c equal to 0. Just solve these two by cross multiplication. There are two methods. I will give you the simpler method. You have two equations 7a plus b plus 2c equal to 0 and 3a plus 5b minus 6c equal to 0. This is an equation in three unknowns but with this, these are two equations in three unknowns. So we use a method called the method of cross multiplication to solve this. The easiest method is like this. Start from coefficient b and write the coefficients in order starting from b. b coefficient is 1, c is 2, a is 7, rewrite b coefficient again. So the sequence is 1, 2, 7, 1. Likewise, for the second equation also write the coefficients in the same order. Start with b first which is 5, then you write c which is minus 6, then you write a which is 3 and finally again b. Remember that you should repeat the b coefficient two times. So b, c, a and b. Now the first determinant here will give you a. So what should be a? minus 6 minus 10 which is minus 16 the usual determinant values next this determinant should give you b so what is the value of b b is equal to 3 2s are 6 minus of minus plus 42 which is 48 and c this value of this determinant which is 7 5s are 35 minus 3 which is 32 but since a, b, c are proportional direction ratios of a line, common factors can be removed. So out of minus 16, 48 and 32, the common divisor is 16. So you can as well write minus 1, divide each by 16, uh, 16 3's are and 16 2's are. So the values of a, b, c are a equal to minus 1, b equal to 3 and c equal to 2 this you substitute back in equation 1 to get the required equation of the line. But remember friends anything you do finally you observe that the equation is x minus 3 y minus 2 z minus 10 equal to 0 right. You can verify this answer because you have one of the points given above. So it is uh, uh, you are finding the plane passing through 3 minus 3 1. So substitute this plane equation sorry substitute the point in this plane you can immediately see that the point is satisfied. So that means this is the correct equation of the plane. Now in this example you have seen that you have one point and two planes right. Now observe the next example. Find the equation of the plane passing through the points 1, 2, 3 and minus 1, 2, 2. So in the next example you have one plane and two points. What are the two points? 1, 2, 3 and minus 1, 2, 2 and this is perpendicular to the plane. There is another plane here that plane is given by 2x plus 3y minus z minus 4 equal to 0. You can see that RHS 4 is written in the on the left side so that it reads as minus 4 equal to 0. So what is the difference between this and the previous example? In the previous example there was uh, one point and two planes. Now you have two points and one plane. Now, but there is no two point form in plane. So, what you do? You apply the, the one point form and use the second point in the one point form because the equation of the plane should be unique. So, what we do? Taking, taking x1, y1, z1 as 1, 2, 3 and using the one point form the required plane equation is a into x minus x1 which is a into x minus 1 plus b into y minus y1 which is b into y minus 2 plus c into z minus z1 which is c into z minus 3 equal to 0. Call that equation 1. Now 1, 2, 3 is a point. You have already obtained the equation of the plane passing through 1, 2, 3. It is also given that minus 1, comma 2, comma 2 is another point on the plane. So what you do now? Because the plane is the same, 
you can substitute the second point in the same plane. So, substitute the second point minus 1, 2, 2 in equation 1 again. So, this plane, this equation, this plane also passes through the point minus 1, 2, 2. Therefore, from equation 1, you put x equal to minus 1, b, uh, y equal to 2 and z equal to 2. So, that gives the equation 2a plus c equal to 0. So, so far what you have done, you have just used the points. Still, the geometrical aspect of the plane has not come. Now, observe that the plane that you have written in equation 1 above is perpendicular to the plane 2 x plus 3 y minus z equal to 4. It is this plane is perpendicular to this and from equation 1, the coefficients of x, y, z are a, b, c. So, the direction ratios of the normal to this plane should be obviously a, b, c. The second plane which is perpendicular to this has a normal like this perpendicular drawn to the plane and its uh, direction ratios are nothing but the coefficients of x, y, z in the equation which are 2, 3 and minus 1. Observe again friends that these two are perpendicular because the two planes are perpendicular, the normals are also perpendicular. So, your perpendicularity condition should give 2 a plus 3 b minus c equal to 0. So, you get 2 a plus 3 b minus c equal to 0. Again as explained in the previous example, just apply cross multiplication to find a b c. What are they? Write the coefficients again. Start with b coefficient first. b coefficient is missing in the first equation. So, it is 0 then c coefficient is 1, then a coefficient is 2, again b coefficient is 0. In the second equation, b coefficient is 3, a is 2, sorry, c is, uh, b is 3, c is minus 1, a is 2, repeat b again, which is 3. The determinant of the first sequence here gives you the value a. So, what should be a? a is 0 minus 3, which is equal to minus 3. What should be b? It is this. So, b should be 1 into 2, 2 minus of, it is a determinant of this value, this sequence. So, 1 into 2, 2 minus of minus 2, which is equal to 4. And what about c? c will be the determinant of the last sequence, which is 3 into 2, 6 minus 0, which is equal to 6. So, that gives you a equal to minus 3, 4, 6. We leave it at this stage because there are no common divisors in this. So, substitute this back in equation 1. So, substituting in 1 finally, the required equation of the plane is 3 x minus 4 y minus 6 z plus 23 equal to 0. Now, the next concept. Now, in the earlier two examples, you have the seen the concept of perpendicular planes. Now, what if the planes are parallel? So, I have a plane like this a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0. What is a plane parallel to this? Can you do, can you obtain the equation of the plane which is parallel to this? As you see the normal to both the planes, this is the normal to the first plane and this is the normal to the second plane, right. So, the direction ratios of the normal to this plane are the coefficients of x, y, z in the equation which are a, b, c. But because these two are parallel, even though the individual normals to the planes are perpendicular to each other, the two planes are parallel. That means to say the normals to the planes should be obviously parallel to each other. Because these two are parallel, I think you know two parallel lines have same proportional ratios. So, the same a, b, c should come here also. So, the other parallel normal to the earlier one should also have the ratios a, b, c. But the only thing that will differ is the position. So, that is where you have this constant changing. So, you can see re read the note there. A plane parallel to the plane a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 is a x plus b y plus c z plus d dash equal to 0. See that there is a difference only in the constant part of the equation. All other terms are as it is. Since two parallel planes have the same proportional direction ratios. Now, the next example relates to this. Find the equation of the plane which passes through the point 3 minus 3 1. Remember one thing friends, for parallel planes whenever a point is given the one point form is not necessary because as I said just now the coefficients of x, y, z in the plane given and in the parallel plane will be the same. 
the only thing that differs is the constant. So, uh, find the equation of the plane which passes through the point 3 minus 3 1 and is parallel to the plane 2 x plus 3 y plus 5 z plus 6 equal to 0. Uh, from the above uh, observe that the plane parallel to the given plane is 2 x plus 3 y plus 5 z plus d dash equal to 0. What difference you see between this and this? The only difference is that x y z are the same only instead of the constant 6 you have a new constant d dash because it is not exactly the same plane. The question is how do you find d dash? But it is given that this plane passes through 3 minus 3 1. So, since this passes through 3 minus 3 1 substitute that in the above equation. So, you get 2 into 3 plus 3 into minus 3 plus 5 into 1 plus d dash equal to 0 or immediately you get d dash equal to minus 2. So, that the plane parallel is 2 x plus 3 y plus 5 z minus 2 equal to 0. The next concept is this. Now, given two planes, what is suppose there are two planes, this is one plane, this is another plane. What is the angle between these two planes? Remember that plane is not a finite surface, it is quite infinite. So, what is the angle between these two planes? How they intersect? So, take the normal to both planes, take the normal here and the normal drawn to this. So, if you have to find the angle between two planes, for example, this and this, take the normals to both the planes, the angle between two planes is defined as the angle between their normals. So, if a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 and a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash z plus d dash equal to 0 are two planes with direction ratios of no their normals as a b c and a dash b dash c dash, then the angle theta between the two planes is cos theta equal to a a dash plus b b dash plus c c dash divided by square root of a square plus b square plus c square into square root of a dash square plus b dash square plus c dash square. If you remember friends, this equation is exactly the equation that you, this equa expression is the exactly the expression you use to find the angle between two lines, whose direction ratios are a b c and a dash b dash c dash. It is quite obvious that the normals are straight lines and hence the same formula is applicable. We will see some, uh, we will see a related example to this. Find the angle between the planes x minus y plus 2 z equal to 9 and 2 x plus y plus z equal to 7. Now, the two plane equations are x minus y plus 2 z minus 9 equal to 0. Always remember to put it in proper form the RHS should be 0. So, anything any constant or any variable you see in the RHS should be brought to the LHS and brought to the standard form. And the second equation is 2 x plus y plus z minus 7 equal to 0. Now, from the first equation, the direction ratios of its normal are the coefficients of x, y, z in this equation, which are respectively 1, minus 1 and 2. So, we will take that, we will label that as a, b, c. And from the second equation, the direction ratios of its normal are the coefficients of x, y, z in the second equation, which is this and they are 2, 1 and 1. So, we will label them as a dash, b dash, c dash and then apply the formula. So, what is the required angle theta? It is given by cos theta equal to a a dash that is 1 into 2 plus b b dash which is minus 1 into 1 plus c c dash which is 2 into 1 whole divided by square root of a square plus b square plus c square which is square root of 1 plus 1 plus 4 into square root of a dash square plus b dash square plus c dash square which is root of 4 plus 1 plus 1. This simplifies to 3 by 6 or half. So, immediately the required angle theta is cos inverse half which is pi by 3 or 60 degrees. So, you conclude that the two planes intersect at an angle of 60 degrees. The question is what is the condition that the two planes are perpendicular? For that you apply the condition for perpendicularity. So, immediately you can say that two planes are perpendicular if a a dash plus b b dash plus c c dash equal to 0. So, the, this is an example related to angle between two planes. We will now go to the next example. 
find the equation of the plane bisecting perpendicularly the join of 2 and 3 and 4 3 minus 1. Now, the, now what is the meaning of this question? You require a plane which is bisecting perpendicularly join of two points. So, there is there are two points 2 and 3 and 4 3 minus 1 there is a line joining these two points. The plane in question that is the plane you are finding is bisecting this plane perpendicularly in the sense the normal drawn to the plane is parallel to this line. Okay? The normal drawn to the plane which is this is parallel to the line. So, I want the equation of this plane find the equation of the plane bisecting perpendicularly the join of 2 1 3 and 4 3 minus 1. So, obviously, it is something like this you have a uh, sheet like this or a cardboard a piece of paper like this and the line is like this it is piercing the sheet of paper such that what is the meaning of bisecting it is dividing the line that is piercing through this paper exactly into two parts. The first part is what you see before you the other part is behind you. So, half of the line is what you see before you half of the line is be behind. So, obviously, the point here the point of bisection should be a point on the plane itself because it lies on the plane. So, one that is the first thing first this point of bisection is a point on the plane second this point since it bi bisects the line it should be the midpoint of these two. So, how do you solve this problem? You take the points as A B assume that A and B be the two given points. So, I will call this capital A and capital B. So, this is x 1 y 1 z 1 and <coughs> x 2 y 2 z 2. You know that the direction ratios of a line with points x 1 y 1 z 1 and x 2 y 2 z 2 are given by x 2 minus x 1 y 2 minus y 1 and z 2 minus z 1. So, what are the direction ratios of a b? They should be 4 minus 2, 4 minus 2 x 2 minus x 1, 3 minus 1 y 2 minus 1 1 and z 2 minus z 1 which is minus 1 minus 3 which comes to 2, 2 and minus 4. But as we discussed earlier friends, these are proportional ratios. So, that you can remove the common divisor from that you can remove 2 in this which comes to 1 1 minus 2 that you can see here. So, 2 2 minus 4 is equivalent to 1 1 and minus 2. Now, since the plane required this plane is perpendicular to a b it is normal is it is the normal drawn to this, this you can see the normal here the normal to, uh, drawn to this plane is parallel to a b correct. And because these two are parallel lines, this line and this line are parallel, the direction ratios of this line are trans uh, uh, direction ratios of this line and this line are, are the same. So, it is normal is parallel to a b and hence the direction ratios of the required of the normal to the required plane can be taken as 1 1 minus 2 itself. Okay? So, the direction ratios of this line and the normal to the plane are one and the same. So, you have a equal to 1, b equal to 1 and c equal to minus 2. So, what happens? The general equation of the plane a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 reduces to 1 x plus 1 y c is minus 2 minus 2 z plus d equal to 0. We will uh, call that equation 1. The question is how can you find the constant d? As I told you earlier to find the constant d observe that uh, the point the midpoint of the line right or the, pi at the, pi the point at which the bisection happens is a point on the plane itself. So, what we do this point is a point both on the line as well as on the plane. So, equivalently we say that the point of bisection is a point on the plane. So, what we do you find this point of bisection. I label that point as capital M. How do you find the point of bisection? Because it is the midpoint of AB, apply the midpoint formula. What is the midpoint formula? The
the midpoint of x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 is x1 plus x2 by 2, y1 plus y2 by 2 and z1 plus z2 by 2. Since I have labeled the point as capital M in this example, the midpoint should be x1 plus x2. So, 2 plus 4 by 2, 2 plus 4 by 2, 6 by 2 is 3. Then 1 plus 3 by 2, which is 4 by 2, which is 2 and then 3 minus 1 by 2, which is 2 by 2 equal to 1. So, this is the midpoint capital M. But since the point M lies on the plane, it should obviously satisfy this equation. So, you can replace in this equation x, y, z by 3 to 1 respectively. That immediately gives you uh, 3 plus 2 minus 2 into 4, to 4 plus d equal to 0 or d equal to minus 3. Substitute this back in equation 1 to get the required equation of the plane. So, this is the required equation of the plane for the given set of conditions. Now, the next concept in plane is the plane through the intersection of two planes. Now, if I give you two planes, two planes always intersect in a straight line. Now, the actual concept is this. I have one plane here, okay, one plane here, another plane is like this, which are intersecting. So, these two planes intersect along this common line. So, that is the first concept here. Two planes intersect in a straight line. So, what is its equation? Let a x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 and a dash x plus b y plus c dash z plus d dash be two planes. It is also represented with a common 0 in between. This 0 that you see in both is represented with a common 0. A x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0 equal to a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash z plus t dash. The plane passing through the line of intersection, line of is optional. You can just say intersection of these two planes is given by the first plane plus some constant times the second plane. A x plus b y plus c z plus d equal to 0, A x plus b y plus c z plus d plus k times a dash x plus b dash y plus c dash z plus d dash where k is a constant. Now, question is what are the direction ratios of the normal to this plane? Observe this. The direction ratios of the normal to this plane are the coefficients of x, y, z in this equation which are expand this you get the coefficient of x is a plus k a dash, the coefficient of y is b plus k b dash and the coefficient of z dash k plus k into c dash. Uh, in this lecture, you have uh, uh, learnt the concept of a plane, plane passing through a single point, then plane passing through three points plus coplanarity and some problems involving that and perpendicular and parallel planes. Uh, thank you friends. In the next lecture, we will be uh, going through examples in the intersection of planes.